I am. Hey, good morning or afternoon or evening, depending on where you are in the world. It's Laura Eubanks with a terrible aim. Um, and I am live streaming for the first time on YouTube. So bear with us as we figure this out together. But, you know, it just felt like since we're all in quarantine and we can't be with each other face to face, that this would be an opportunity for you to just kind of check in and see how I'm spending this quarantine. Basically, this whole area of my garden, I've got this bougainvillea, oh, snail, ugh. I have this bougainvillea planted against the wall, and then I underplanted it years ago with whatever. I mean, whatever I had, project leftovers, cuttings, whatever. So over the years, what's happened is the plants have done two things. One, they've gotten big and heavy, so gravity's kind of pulling them forward. And they're also, you know, like plants do, reaching, reaching, reaching for the light. In this garden, the sun, the east is over here, so it comes this way, and then, wait, it's right there, yeah, it comes this way, and then it sets over there. So this area gets full sun, you know, um, so it's not really a question of an improper exposure, it's just more weight. It, but this is such a huge job, and I just haven't made the time, you know, I've been too busy, uh, working and doing other things, but it has been the bane of my existence and I'm sure that you all have areas in your garden too That you just look at it and look away and just roll your eyes because oh god So this is going down the proverbial Rabbit hole once I start with this there is not going to be any turning back because I am going to be pulling Everything out except the bougainvillea cutting it all up and resetting it tight against the wall so I am just gonna, gonna dig in. You know, there's not much of a root system on most of this stuff because most of it was planted as a cutting. Um, to give you an example, look at this aeonium. How's that for a minute of growth? See, and aeoniums are so smart. You know, all plants are smart. It tried to hold itself upright. See these roots right here? You know, it was trying to create more branching to give this more stability, but at the end of the day, it lost to gravity and it just kind of crapped up and crapped over. So I am not loving that. I'm going to cut all of this off and dispose of it. And then when I get back to, when I get to the resetting mode, I'll just set this part. And if this part isn't going to stand up for me, then I'll just cut it up into individual rosettes. You know, I'm not worried about it. But anywho, so here we go. Let the games begin. Also, if you have questions as I'm going through this process, comments, anything that you want to say or talk about, please don't hesitate. I've got Hannah and Greg standing by and available to relay any questions or comments to me so that we can talk about whatever's on your mind. Ugh. Aw, you are so welcome. RC loves vertical gardening, loves their rain gutters, credits us for the inspiration. We're thrilled. I know we love vertical gardening too. So it's such an easy way to go. Ah, uh, okay. Cal and Coey. Well, yeah. Cal and Coey Orgialis or Copper Spoons. Also looking a little rough. See this wonderful bloom though? This bloom isn't even begun to be done, so I'm going to go ahead and let that ride. How's Greg doing? How's Greg doing? Greg is getting stronger by the day. He ha has been spending about five mornings a week upstairs turning on his gangsta wrap and doing his exercises. He does hundreds of 
crunches and push-ups and leg lifts, just really working on strengthening his core, his pecs, his biceps, his, his, uh, he wants to improve his balance. He's also, many of you know, that before he went into cardiac arrest last August, he was scheduled a couple of days post out to have a knee replacement done because he's got severe arthritis in one of his knees and it's causing him a great deal of pain and you know he's limping and so he's gonna get that all straightened out. Well, that's off the table obviously now. He's on a medications that do not allow for him to undergo surgery so he's working on homeopathically improving the mobility of his knee. So he's also been doing a lot of stretching and you know, our diet has completely turned around. Uh, we eat extremely clean now, which has been wonderful for the whole family. Greg's inflammation is way down. Uh, we cut out processed foods, we cut out a lot of sugar, we cut out fats, you know, we, we eat organic, mostly fruits and vegetables and whole grains. And so inflammation's gone way down and that's helped with his mobility as well. Thank you for asking. Oh, uh, what do we have here? It's going to be like Christmas in March. Um, Woo! Dakari, nice. Ghost plant, ghost plant. Are you referring to little ghosty? Um, if so, sure, I bet it is. That, that would make perfect sense. It is a tough booger. Also, um, in Las Vegas, Sandra wants to know if she can put her fat eyes in the ground. In Vegas, you put Fred Ives in the ground. Fred Ives is also one of the toughest plants I've ever run across. It tolerates a lot of heat. It'll tolerate a lot of water. I've seen it tolerate humidity. Uh, I don't think it's going to tolerate cold real well because the leaves are so full of water. Um, I think that it, it would freeze if you're careful with it and you cover it protect it from frost, um, give it a, an area where it's going to get partial, partial shade, maybe in the afternoon. I, oh dear. I have no idea. <clears throat> That's, I think it's, um, Yes, bougainvillea all up here on the wall. Wire cages, huh, funny you should ask. Yes, I learned the hard way. I had planted out these bougainvillea. Um, there's about 12 of them in here and early you know in the early garden and everything was going splendidly for a few months and then i noticed came out one day and i noticed that they were wilted and i thought well that's odd i feel like i had just watered but dutifully you know water 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 wilt 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 and as i'm watering they're starting to collapse and fall over and upon closer examination not gophers but voles right at the right at ground level uh, I had attached the bougainvillea with wire because I wanted to create kind of a pattern with them and hold them against the fence and that was holding them up but they were not making contact with the ground so I lost every single bougainvillea so I went to um, a local garden center here in spring in gopher cages and I've had no problem since that lens, I've never been that concerned because roots, for the most part, as you know, are optional. So I did have a gopher take out the roots of my Medio Picta Alba, which I've been showing you. We've been kind of following up on it. It's fine. The plant is fine. It doesn't have a single root, but it's fine. So I just set it back on top of the ground and am waiting for to reestablish a, a root system. If you're concerned, by all means, it can't hurt to do that. But with succulents, I just haven't found it to be necessary.
Okay, from Spain, uh, that is a Mediterranean climate as well, so we got that going for us. But what do we do when it storms? What do we do when it's windy and blustery and raining, and I'm assuming pretty chilly? If there is any way that you can protect your tend more tender plants, meaning move potted things to shelter, things that are in the ground, if you can create some kind of temporary structure for them, that would be advisable. Um, it's occasional here we might get hail, which is my nemesis because hail will put pith marks and damage all of the leaves of all of my plants in the entire garden. I have been known to literally throw myself as a human shield over my agave attenuata variegata when I hear hail. Um, so any be creative, any way that you can think of to create some kind of a tenting system or sheets over top or creating some kind of a barricade from the wind anything that you can do to protect more tender plants do it ones that maybe aren't as valuable let them ride it out they will very much surprise you just remember anything that you see post storm in standing water is to be addressed and dried out and replanted in dry soil oh what a hot mess this is Woo! Thank you, Jonathan Eubanks, for sending $10. I'm not sure how you did that, but I sure appreciate it. Who did? Oh, my God, you're sending me money? <laughs> Lord, I don't, I don't know how to thank you. Um, I don't know how you're doing it. Uh, you can see that I am super savvy, uh, but I sure do appreciate it. We don't know when we're going to be able to get back to work. Uh, we are having faith. We're keeping our sense of humor. Trust me, we um, are so inclined. Uh, we appreciate that and um, thank you profusely. Okay. Oh my gosh. So remember, I told you I haven't been in this in this area in years. This is a jade, most likely. Parasula. This is basically the same plant as you see in my garden that's got the yellow leaves. It just it huh, got a little shaded by some other things, and it looks super rough. Yeah, this guy, can you see that? Same plant. Yeah, not feeling I'm going to toss it off into the maybe pile. Okay, what are, you know, I'll start with the wood mulch question. You know, tomato, tomato, mulch, mulch is great. Any kind of mulch has its benefits because it does some things. One, mulch keeps moisture in the soil. Uh, see, uh, mulch can often dissuade the progression of, of weeds, can kind of suffocate weeds, but wood mulch, First of all, doesn't make a lot of sense with succulents from an aesthetic standpoint because when you're walking out in the Arroyo or cruising through Mexico or South Africa, you don't generally see succulents by sand and rock and granite. So I like the look of rock so much better. Another benefit is Rock dries faster than wood mulch, which retains a lot of moisture, and you can grow mold and mildew in, in um, wood uh, mulch. Wood mulch decomposes a lot faster than rock, obviously. Rock also, over time, uh, transfers trace elements into the soil, which is very, very beneficial. And it doesn't blow away when the gardener comes through, does it, with the blower. So if you can do rock, do it. Uh, if wood mulch is your only option, my sympathies, um, but met that I didn't like. <clears throat> Inland California? Can, oh, um, I didn't really plant this Aeonium sunburst, but yeah, okay. Um, 
Kalanchoe orgialis, was that the question? Yes, Kalanchoe orgialis is a tough, great plant. It can do full sun, it can even do full shade um, coastal. So that's a good one, get it. It likes a lot of air circulation, it's like um, some space. I have tucked it in here in against my wall. It hasn't done great because I think it's just too crowded. Uh, it seems to like to kind of own the show. And my favorite succulents, I think one of my favorites would have to be Sunburst Aeonium. I just love this. Who, right? I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer. I like um, I like my oddities, spiritos, my collectible plants. I love Aluaudia procera. Um, I mean, I love them all. I, I'm particularly passionate about succulent rosettes that color up, that turn purple and orange that look like jewels in a jewel box. Those, uh, those always catch my eye. Here's the pot that that sunburst aeonium came. Oh dear. Yeah, not a moment too soon on this. Huh? Here's, um, here's a Senecio orange puffs that I stuck in as a cutting doesn't look the greatest. I think my idea here was to, you know, try to get some height going. I failed, but hey, you know, you don't learn anything when you're getting it right. Embrace failure. Daddy wants to get closer to me. I love that. Yeah, and then these, you know, these little pieces of jade, I'll cut them up and reset them because they're just a little leggy. I mean, I've got some stuff in here that's rotten. Um, oh, what's your favorite ground cover plants around the Oh, what are my favorite ground covers? Try to be stationary, Daddy. Um, my favorite ground covers? Well, here is a ground cover. This is Sedum Brevifolia. This is a nice one. This one for me tends to die back quite a bit in the summer and make a resurge in the winter cooler months. This sweet alyssum comes up every year in my garden. I just love this plant. And when it starts to uh, bloom out, I pull it out, shake the seeds out and throw it away. But every year around this time, it comes back with a vengeance. And this tricolor is called Easter Bonnet. Uh, I have some time too around the pond. I've got some woolly thyme. I find that woolly is a better variety than elfin or some of the other more delicate ones. And of course, Daimondia. I love Daimondia. Maybe later we'll get after this. I put some Daimondia plugs in here as a test because this is a really hot spot in my garden. I wanted to see how it would do and it is done. And then some. I've got flagstones going all the way through here that the Daimondia has covered up. So I've got to get in and cut, cut out my stones. You can dance a jig on Daimondia. Bentley can pee on and poop on it. You cannot kill this stuff once it gets started. It does like some water, but it doesn't have to have it. So those, I guess, would be my favorites of the ones that I have used thus far. Wow. People from all over the world, as far away as Bulgaria and San Francisco. <laughs> I'm so flattered. I love it. And you know what? If, if I could do it, I would send every single one of you all the succulents you could ever desire. I wish you were all here where we could share the wealth. Buff Slut wants to know if your bush is still Buff Slut wants to know if my bush, girl or dude. I don't discriminate. My bush, when I'm gardening, my bush is always on fire. Let's just clarify that right now. How old is Bentley? Bentley is six and barking upstairs. Oh, here's a little Fred Ives. That's an afterthought. I'm not sure what his story is. Just... <gasps> the succulent baby is watching. Those of you that follow me on Instagram at Laura Loves Succulents know all about. Griffin, our 
two-year-old, the OG succulent baby. He has now been joined by little sister, Quinn Elizabeth, and another cousin, our son John, had a little baby, Lucy Elizabeth, he and his wife, Marianne. So we are triple blessed now with succulent babies coming out our ears. I love you, Griffo. You're Grandy's boy. Oh my God, what a hot mess. And I was just about to say, I haven't even had to break out the shovel yet. Most all of these plants in my garden were started as cuttings. I cannot say enough about that. If it's possible, if you live in an area where the weather will permit you to work predominantly with cuttings, do it because it's so much easier to control the growth and the maintenance of your plants if you're not competing with a huge mature root system. This plant's been here a minute and it's given me a little grief, but I will persevere. Oh, ooh, that's a nice piece. See, with Crassula or Jade, this one is so easy to work with as a cutting too. So I can pull pieces off of this plant to work with them later. And then if I want, if I can't get the root, oh, there it comes. I was gonna say I can get the shovel, but. Hi, Terry. It's blonde, Terry. Love you, girl. Woohoo! And this, this soil in my garden is such an incredible hodgepodge. We up oh, there's Cleo, our uh, our hawk. It started out as a lawn. Bought, or we rented. We don't own this home. We rent it. Rented this house 10, 11 years ago. And it was just, I called it a moonscape. It was grass, some ugly bushes, gopher holes all over the place. We were broke, didn't have any money to put into, into the yard. So I basically just pulled the blinds and ran black plastic to solarize the grass for a year because I had to do something, but I, you know. And during that time, we also stockpiled flagstones, pieces of wood, little snippets and clippets, whatever we could, um, whatever we could get off of, off of job leftovers or, you know, wow, or whatever. And this garden was built from that, from those humble beginnings. Greg made all of my furniture. Um, all, yeah, all these rocks and flagstones were project leftovers. This has been a test garden for me, you know, starting all of my all of my little ground covers and all of my cuttings and all of my plants and being able to watch how they grow and and mature through these microclimates we tried a lot of different kinds of decomposed granite because about nine years ago the big thing in the industry was designer dg so they had it in fun colors and we got all excited about that but <laughs> we thought ooh, dark colored dg would really make the plants pop and we weren't wrong, but every time we watered the plants, that dark DG left what looked like pit stains around every plant. It was so ugly. So, what, Han? What, okay. Um, so we kept putting different kind of DGs and different kinds of pebbles on, you know, just building, building, building. And then Greg dug me out the pond and we had to do something with all of that dirt. So what is beneath the, here is a layering of gravels and rocks and amended topsoils and dirts and hard pan. It doesn't matter with succulents. As long as it drains, we're good to go. As far as non-succulents, you know, I was a perennial gardener before I was a succulent gardener. I'm also a University of California master gardener. So I do have an affinity and an appreciation for other kinds of plants, sort of. Uh, I do, of course, have my bougainvillea, which I love. I know this can get away from you and run amok, but this satisfies my OCD. I'm out here once a week snipping and clipping to keep it at bay, and I don't find it to be a problem at all. I do fertilize it heavily with a chemical 
fertilizer to uh, push bloom because this is a heavy feeder. The succulents underneath obviously don't mind the fertilization. I have Stephanotis climbing up uh, one of my pergolas. I have a wisteria. I have Eden climbing roses that Greg built me boxes for. I've got honeysuckle, brugmansia. I've got one, two, three citrus trees. What else do I have that is not a, a succulent? Oh, house plants. Well, let's put it this way. They know me at Home Depot because I participate in the Walk of Shame on the regular there. They have at the box stores, they have this great deal where if you keep your receipt and you kill a plant, they'll, you know, give you your money back or replace it. No questions asked. Keep, you know, if you're like me, you keep that receipt because I have no instincts for house plants. I don't know. I don't know. I cannot keep them alive. I have no house plants. I kill them. Uh, so that's given me a tremendous amount of empathy for you guys because out here with the succulents, it's just like falling off a log for me. But what, when I get frustrated or if someone asks a question that I think, you know, is, oh, come on, I remember I don't have a clue on how to grow plants inside. So I have empathy and I have sympathy and I have patience with you because I know what it's like if it's not, doesn't come real natural. So um, I'm happy that I had the houseplant experience. It's taught me to be a better human being, but I am not going to subject a poor plant to my care. So don't ask me about houseplants, unless you want to know how to kill them. And then I could probably write a book. So Denise, Denise Shapiro. Yeah, she's working with Howie. Howie, Denise and Howie. Hello, my lovelies. So Bentley, barking. Bentley's busy barking right now. Yeah, hello from Israel. Hello from Israel. From Trinidad. Trinidad. Oh, the world has shown up. From where? From Compton, California. Fan-freaking-tastic. Ooh, here's some little plants. They've been asking about the spawn of Satan, too. Oh, snails? Always expect snails after a rain. And whatever your particular train of thought is, I just... Bentley is not allowed in my garden, so I don't worry about him uh, eating snail bait. Um... So I sprinkle out Bugetta Plus after the rain. It works real well. Um, within a few days, all I have are snail carcasses. Uh, if you don't like using poison, you can collect them mechanically. You can set out cans of beer. That's very, very effective. Um, or you can just mechanically pluck them out of your space, which I also do. But snails are the spawn of Satan because what they will do is they will chew through a leaf of your plant thus ruining it aesthetically forever. So I do not tolerate snails. Does the Aluaudia tolerate high heat? Aluaudia? Um, yeah. Yeah, Aluaudia tolerates a lot of heat. I'm trying to think, you know, where we've planted it, where it gets hot. We've planted it as far as Ventura. We've planted it inland uh, in Escondido and other parts of... Yeah, and it's an arid plant um, native to Madagascar. So this guy, you know, if it stresses from drought or from cold, it'll lose its leaves. No big deal. You can see that it's starting to leaf back out up at the top. It got a little chilly here uh, for a period of time. So some of the leaves dropped off, but it's bouncing back. I've got all these beautiful little green leaflets everywhere on this plant. And if this gets too tall for you, uh, cut it where you want it, set your cuts aside, dig out the root ball, reset your cuts, and start all over again. Just remember, this is a good plant to harden off first because it, it can rot. Um, and by harden off, I mean set it in a box or set it in a garage. Let that wound callus thoroughly and then reset it in dry soil. It'll take a minute to root. This is going to root fast. It's going to take months, but uh, it will. And, you know, that's how you can maintain the size of this plant. What's the first plant you planted in your house in the last one? The first plant that I planted in my house was actually 
a sense of area, a mother-in-law's tongue. Um, my mother could grow houseplants. And I do remember, she used to get a bucket with miracle Grow, and once a week she would go around and water all the houseplants. She's very studious about it, and they would get a certain amount of water depending on the plant. Um, and that was that. I don't know. I'm more spontaneous in my approach. I cannot remember to water once a week with miracle Grow at a specific time or with a specific amount. It's just all too complicated for me. So the Sansevieria in time died. Also, you know, the pothos. That's a, you know, a really, really popular house plant. I've tried those. Uh, they were very, very popular in macrame planters back in the 70s. Granted, I was a mere baby in the 70s, but I can remember hanging it, you know, in its little macrame uh, and having it, you know, I was so excited about it, hanging, you know, down and, and getting huge and, and it just shriveled and died. So, um, pothos, I've tried a fiddle leaf fig, I've done, um, ficus, uh, pretty much you name it. I mean, I'm like anybody else. I go to the home store and I see these beautiful glossy house plants and I, oh, I want that. Keep your receipt and you'll be gold. Would you look at that? I've even got a really, really nice piece of driftwood in here. Wow, I'll be doing something fun with that. I want to know if Bentley pees on the succulents, and if so, does it hurt them? She has $2. Mm -hmm. um, no, Bentley does not pee on the succulents because he is not allowed. And yes, it would hurt them. It would no doubt eventually kill them. Dog urine is disgusting. So you train Fido to stay the hell away from your succulents. You've all seen Bentley's toilet, right? Let's go look. I love my dog, and he gets, gets taken out for a very, very long hike, as most of his business. But, you know, when you got to go, you got to go. So I created a beautiful little area for him back here. That's a little piece of fake grass. Greg, you want to go ahead and head back? And he can pee all day long there. He can poo, too, if he wants. But see, that's all. You just take your dog to the area where you want him to go over and over again. It's like a toddler until they figure it out. And then you should not have a problem. <clears throat> All right, back to the salt mines. Oh, yeah, there's 321 of you watching right now. And somebody hates me, but that's okay, because every good story needs an uh, antagonist. Um, feel free to talk amongst yourselves, too. We're a community here, right? Are spiders considered pests? Are spiders considered pests? Spiders are friends of the garden because spiders do eat some of the non-beneficial. Spiders will eat aphids. They'll eat other bugs that might impact your plants in a negative way. But remember, you know, we don't want no bugs in a garden. There is a life cycle to take into consideration. And in order to maintain the health of your garden, the atmosphere of the planet, you have to tolerate a certain amount of bugs. They, we cannot eliminate all of them. That would destroy the ecosystem. So spiders are not going to hurt your plants. You know, they can also throw off webs and collect ants and other things, uh, maybe even a grasshopper or two. So encourage the spiders. And uh, remember that if you see ants, they're probably vectoring another insect. They're probably escorting aphids or mealybugs or scale onto your plant. So be careful, investigate your plants. The ants themselves probably aren't gonna hurt your plant, but the stuff that's getting a free ride on their back will. So you'll wanna take care of that with either an organic or a chemical treatment. What's Laura's favorite food? Shouldn't I stay in my own lane? Um, well, to be honest, uh, 
since Greg and I went plant-based, I miss round table pizza. I miss it hard. I miss it with a passion. It makes me sad to think about that delicious, cheesy, greasy, pepperoni goodness. And uh, yeah, I mean, I loved going to round table back in the day. I used to go see a shrink in La Mesa. I had a weekly appointment to get my head screwed on straight. And then afterwards I would go to round table pizza, which was right around the corner and they had this lunch buffet. So I would take just a couple of slices of pizza and eat them. And then I would take a couple more and wrap them like in the pages of a magazine and try to sneak them out. Uh, for the kids, for when they came home from school for a snack for Alex and Hannah. And in my mind, I was justified. You know, I know it's, it, in a buffet, you're only supposed to eat what you can eat in the restaurant. You're not supposed to take food out. But I thought I was only eating literally two slices. So this is not a problem in my mind. I was very entitled. And I got caught by the owner of the restaurant, and he chased me down the sidewalk, screaming at me to never return. Uh, scared me straight. I have never taken a piece of pizza wrapped in a magazine out of a restaurant since, and I never will. Now, I've got some really, really good compost here where I ripped out these plants. There's all kinds of dead bougainvillea leaves, and, you know, in time, over a period of years, this will all compost and make a really, really, really nice uh, soil base, but I don't have years. I want to put this garden back together stat. So I will not be ignoring all of these leaves and planting in them. I'm going to throw them out into the compost and then use it another time when it's all fully composted. Is it okay to plant in wet soil? It really depends on where you live and what you're planting and what time of year it is. We got rain here in San Diego last night. The soil's pretty wet, but we are not expecting any more rain for the foreseeable future. So I feel very confident setting my cuttings back in the ground that they'll be all right. If you have any doubts, let your plants harden off for about a week before setting them in the soil. No, I've never hurt myself. Um, I did get stung by a bee once. It was a really, really long time ago. It was, yeah, actually, well, I didn't get hurt. No, but weren't you thinking about jumping into Oh, oh, yeah. Well, I, I was before succulents, and I was working at a client's garden, and this very aggressive bee started buzzing my ear. And, you know, I'm trying to shoo it away, and it's getting louder and louder. And... So I got up, I, I thought, I'll leave its territory. You know, obviously I'm in its territory. So I start walking up the sidewalk. It's, it's coming with me, still buzzing my ear, you know, and I'm doing the crazy thing where I look like I'm having a seizure. I head all the way up the street. Finally, the bee leaves me alone. Okay. So I head back. I settle back into what I was doing. A couple seconds later, the bee is back. But this time it doesn't buzz me. It stung me behind the ear. I mean, that thing just came in and bam, nailed me right behind the ear, just like that. I panicked. It hurt so bad. I freaked out and got up, ran around to the side yard and jumped in the client's pool. I, had, I just had a feeling that maybe there would be more or that it wasn't just one bee, but a swarm. Um, turns out it was just the one, just the one. Uh, there were no other bees. I don't know why that bee had it in for me, but that swelled up and was sore for months. Um, I probably should have went to a doctor, but I didn't. And uh, that's, my, that's my story of woe. That's it. I've never, you know, knock on wood, been hurt. I've been very fortunate. Uh, typical muscle soreness after the end of a hard day. You know, a lot of times too, I work without gloves. Haven't had any problems with spiders or snakes. So hopefully that luck will continue. Now, when I run across really, really nice river rocks like this, I'm gonna set them aside because I wanna reuse those. These things are pricey. And there's nothing 
more beautiful in a garden than freshly set ribbon rock is there so yeah as we see these we're going to recover them and set them aside Yeah, I have not, thank God, had a tr problem with wasps or hornets. But living here in the land of milk and honey, I know I'm lucky. I know I'm fortunate. I know that so many of you deal with so much more, and I have such respect for that. My favorite flowering succulent. My favorite flowering succulent. <laughs> Probably the yucca. You know, you see them along the freeways and in the spring they throw off that white plume and they're just absolutely stunning. Probably the, one of the most common succulents on the planet, but that bloom is absolutely spectacular. What about the smaller ones? Of the smaller succulents, I mean, I don't know. I love, I love any bloom that's attractive. You know, a lot of the Senecios don't throw off very pretty blooms, but they smell good. They smell kind of spicy, but they don't look good. I don't like things that look good. And I love flowers and blooms, which is why I have this wall of bougainvillea behind me. So what are you doing now? Right now, I'm just, I'm cleaning all of the detritus off the ground. I'm recovering all of my very, very expensive river rock to use later. And I'm also checking... I'm looking for infestations. I'm looking for ants. I'm looking for grubs, weevils, whatever. Anything that looks weird that I might need to address with a drench. And I am seeing nothing except earthworms, which is fantastic. How do I feel diving into this? Fantastic. I mean, this is something that I have wanted to do for a long time, but Greg, if you will show them just how long this area is, you know, this is obviously going to take me a minute. Uh, I haven't really felt like I could allow the time because our schedule is so jam packed. So I'm just so thankful that I have the opportunity now to get into this project in my own garden. It is going to feel amazing. Um, to get this done and you know what even even if all you have is a small balcony or a windowsill do something with plants something beautiful something that inspires you calms you something meditative something they'll give you that'll give you some hope I'm very very blessed I know that to have all of this this is a really you know by most standards small yard but I know that many of you are dealing with even smaller spaces, but that is no excuse not to have some precious plants that you can fuss over and tend and water. Uh, as far as fertilizer goes, they sell fertilizers for cactus and succulents. Feel free to use it if it makes you feel good. I don't fertilize my plants. Just never, I don't know, I, they don't need it. I do fertilize the non-succulents, but I don't fertilize the succulents, but you can, it'll give you something to do. You know, do, um, do some homework uh, on the plants. Research your plants. Learn about them. Learn about where they, where their origin is, um, so that when you go to a party, you can bore people to death. Saskatchewan for the win. Hey, Melissa from Canada. How's your weather today? Saskatchewan. When I think of Saskatchewan, I think gorgeous. I think a lot of open space and I think extremes when it comes to weather. Am I right? And Tim Watts says hello from the UK and wants to know if you can propagate the leaves with aeonium. Can you propagate aeonium leaves? It sort of depends. Hi, Kim. Um, you know, it depends on the aeonium and how much flush there is in that leaf. I, 
I've seen Aeonium kiwi and Aeonium haworthii uh, leaf propagate. Um, where I, you know, I've been in my garden and I've looked down, and I've seen a leaf on the ground and a little plantlet coming out the end of it. I haven't intentionally tried to leaf propagate Aeonium. So maybe somebody else in this forum could answer your question better than I, since I have no direct experience. Leaf propagation is something that I really haven't had much patience for. And also here in San Diego, it kind of happens naturally if there's a leaf on the ground for any length of time, it's probably going to root wherever it's dropped and start a new plant. It's just sort of the way it is here, which is pretty awesome, I know. Tracy sent in $20 and RC is challenging people. Oh my gosh. You guys, stop. Stop sending money. You're too much. Um, many of you are, are donating and sending in money. That was not my intention with this. Uh, my intention was just to hang out with you because I love you. But I thank you. For those of you that feel so inspired um, to share I'm overwhelmed by that. Um, our jobs as landscapers are not essential. And with Greg's health being what it is, we don't want to take any chances through this quarantine of exposing him to anything. So we are on lockdown. We are not leaving the house. Hannah and Alex have been going out very carefully to get whatever we need when we need it. Um, but we're sticking put. And I don't know, you know, when we're going to be able to get back to work. So... My situation is not unique. And I, you know, I can't, I can't give people any money right now, but I can give my time. I can hang out in the garden and answer questions and do more videos. And I guess that would be my challenge to all of you. What can you do? What feels downstream to you? What feels good? What feels right? What feels like you? And if, if helping us out to keep the lights on feels good to you, then thank you. Um, if you just want to uh, watch, uh, ask questions, um, it would be excite me just as much to know that you were inspired to go out and get in your garden or start doing something with succulents for the first time, maybe. Oh my gosh, there is so, never mind. I mean, there are so many river rocks in here. It's crazy. This is great. Oh, and I found a sprinkler head too. This is your own business, right? This, when did you start it? my business, Design for Serenity, is something that is mine, and I did start it about, how old are you, Hannah? You were in kindergarten when I got my first client. So, about 16 years ago, I, um, I was doing a home daycare. And my last kid went off to school and one of the parents said, you know, you should, you should like do people's yards. <laughs> they had been so impressed with what I had done for myself. Um, so I got a call from a gentleman who was a friend of one of my daycare clients and I went over to see him and oh my gosh, talk about out of my league. They had just remodeled their house and their, their yard looked like downtown Beirut, no offense Beirut, um, but it was pretty much just dirt and way beyond anything that I felt like I could handle. I didn't you know, know anything, I didn't have any licensing, I didn't have any training. So I told the guy, look, I'd be happy to come you know, plant some flowers, but first you need to put in, a, I don't know, a driveway, an irrigation system, lighting, sidewalks, raised beds, you know, do all the hardscape and then call me back. And he did, he did call me back. So Doug was my first client all those years ago, I just, you know, I wasn't into succulents yet, so I planted a lot of flowers and posies and bushes and plants. I earned, I charged him $15 an hour plus the cost of my materials. And that relationship lasted for over a year. And during that time, I started to get more requests from other people, from friends of friends of friends and neighbors and whatnot. And that's how Design for Serenity was born when I moved to succulents was because our business became so overwhelmed with maintenance because planting all of those perennials 
they need a lot of work and a lot of maintenance and a lot of time. So I was spending more time doing maintenance than designing. Wasn't making much money doing maintenance. We couldn't sustain the business. So we basically gave all of our maintenance clients to my mom's gardener and we just started over. Uh, we reinvented the business and I said, I'm just gonna do succulents. They're the closest thing to plastic in the plant world. Maybe working with succulents, I can get some color because I loved color. And you know, I won't need to go every week and spend hours and hours and hours on maintenance. And guess what, I was right. So it, I was hooked. I mean, it didn't take me long to realize, okay, this is how it's done. Then the drought. Talk about being in the right place at the right time. That was uh, a terrible thing for the world, but a great thing for the Eubanks because that drought came on right when I was getting my feet wet with planting with succulents and creating all of this kind of drama um, without the need of water or a lot of, of maintenance was extraordinarily appealing. And we have never looked back. Do uh, Isabel wants to know if I make my own what? Plant soap spray. Oh, do I make my own plant soap spray? Well, yeah, I have actually. Uh, you can take Joy detergent and dilute it in water 10 to one in a spray bottle. And if you've got a minor infestation of aphids, soft scale, even mealybug on a plant, you can spray it with that soapy water and it will suffocate those boogers and kill them. Um, that's a great organic approach to a minor situation. If you've got a major infestation, if you've been asleep at the wheel and you come out one day and go, holy crap, where did all these bugs come from? I suggest that you um, pursue something a little stronger. But yes, you can absolutely work with alcohol, isopropyl, or detergent diluted in water and vinegar. I'm sure there are some other home remedies that you all can share with each other too. My favorite country to visit. Wow, um, this succulents, these succulents have taken us a lot of places, most recently Paris, France, although that wasn't succulent related, that was Greg's heart related. But um, I have to say in all and utter complete honesty that my very favorite place to be is right here in my own garden. I visited Bali, which was spectacular. I visited South America a couple of times, spectacular. Been all over the United States. Um, I've been to Italy, I've been to Greece, I've been to Turkey, I've been around. I've been to other parts of the United States, South America, Brazil, uh, and they all have their merits. I have always found the people to be lovely everywhere I've gone, always kind. Oh, um, Australia is a real bucket list. I know I have a lot of followers there. And you know, I'll tell you what intimidates me about Australia is how big it is. I mean, basically if you could get me there, I would come, um, but I don't know where to go. And I, I don't know exactly who to ask. And it's just overwhelming to me. So I would need a lot of help before I navigated a trip to Australia, but I would absolutely love that. I would love to design there. Um, but, you know, one of the reasons why I do this is because I want to inspire you wherever you live. I want you to feel the way I feel. I mean, no matter what's happening in my life at any given moment, any given day, any given time, this is my happy place. You still have 372 people and when I sit out here in my garden with some iced tea or a cup of coffee, um, and I watch the birds and I listen to my water feature and I look around at all the beauty that surrounds me that we basically put together, as I th said, through Project Cassoffs and Cuttings. Um, it's, it's where I want to be. You know, it's great to visit other places. I enjoy other places, but I want you to create a space of your own that is your happy place, that a place where you would rather be than anywhere else because that is the definition of a rich life. And if I can help you with that, uh, that's what I'm here for. So let's make you a beautiful, beautiful place to go and to be so that you never have to leave. 
Okay, so, I mean, I've been at this for a minute now, and I have cleared out what looks to be, what, like, maybe three feet? Doesn't that look better already? See, this is when you know you're on the right track. It's just when just getting rid of crap makes the space look 100, right? So... Let me, uh, let me dump this bucket o detritus and we'll get back to yanking stuff out. She has showed them the garden a little bit then. Hi guys. <laughs> Hannah says hi everybody. Do what? Okay, uh, those of you that have discovered, as we recently have, the community page on Laura Eubanks' YouTube, please don't hesitate to comment with specific videos that you might like to see. Now that you're spending more time with me out here in my garden and you're seeing what I've got to work with, maybe it'll inspire you to ask some questions that could be of benefit to you. And I'm happy to you know, happy to help in any way I can. Um, I am going to be reworking some pots for sure that are very, very run amucky and doing my best to talk about the cultural habits of a lot of plants, um, what they like, what they don't like. Uh, but remember that my advice is experiential. I don't have a degree in horticulture or botany. I didn't go to college for this or anything for that matter. And everything that I tell you, I tell you based on my own personal experience. So if I don't know, I'll tell you that. Um, but when it comes to succulents, I mean, I've worked with just about everyone there is, so I should be able to, to be of benefit to some extent. My variegated agave? Oh, my... Uh, my pride and joy, my agave variegata, attenuata variegata, I got at California Cactus Center in Pasadena, California, five or six years ago. And what a winner that has been. Yeah, it was a one gallon. Um, I also have tried three times with aloe polyphyla, the spiral aloe. And I've killed each and every one here. You know, we can grow here in Chula Vista in my, my zone, in my microclimate. I can really grow pretty much anything but that. So we went to a, on a trip up the central coast before this uh, COVID nightmare began a, a couple of months ago. And I stopped at Terra Soul Nursery in Goleta, California, and they had a spiral aloe this big. It was not for sale. It was incredible. I mean, I was speechless when I saw it. It was so gorgeous. So if you have any luck growing aloe polyphyla, you are a very fortunate person. Anna Bernadette? Anna Bernadette, you are my biggest fan. Thank you so much for following. I appreciate you so much. Do, you watch any other Do I watch any other succulent YouTubers? No. I mean, and I don't I don't say that to be any kind of way. I I have always followed the beat of my own drummer and I've never you know, even back in the early days, I've just never wanted to be influenced by anybody else. It was, it was really important to me to figure this out on my own and to find my own voice, um, to find my own art, find my own way, especially since I hadn't had any formal training. I wanted to, to figure it out for myself. So 
I was never interested really in what anybody else was doing. I wanted to, to do my thing. And then all of you seem to like it. So most of my time is spent either installing, maintaining, or answering your questions. And I'm perfectly content and happy to do that. So uh, no, I don't watch any other, any other succulent YouTubers on any kind of regular basis. If people, if you want to reach out to me, uh, you are welcome to go to my website at designforserenity.com and that will generate, you can generate an inquiry and you can email me and I would love to hear from you that way. That's a good way uh, to do that. Sometimes in social media, I have, you know, a few platforms and it gets really difficult to keep up with all the comments. And I miss some. And, and if you have sent me a message or a question and I have not responded, I apologize. I didn't see it. I spend hours responding to questions and comments. I love responding to your questions and comments. So be diligent and keep trying. If I haven't got back to you yet, I promise I will. Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, Hannah says that I've got a war going on now um, with you guys trying to decide who's the biggest fan. That's funny. You all are funny. You all make my day. This is Aloe Blue Elf. And it was literally just stuck back in a corner. And you know what? Looking pretty fly. This is definitely going to be one that I will replant. And because it has done so well back here, I may grab more of it. I like that a lot. I like the way that looks. Argentia Sunset is the right Yeah, the jade. I've got Crassula Argentia Sunset all over this garden. And the minute it gets a little bit hot or a little bit cold or a little bit wet or a little bit dry and that plant stresses out, it turns yellow and it makes my life complete. Here are, this is a leaf from, I'm pretty sure this is Orgialis. Might, I don't think it's a cotyledon. No, this is an Orgialis leaf. And you can see that it's starting to do something there at the joint. Here's the leaf. And there's a little something, something happening there. So if you want to try leaf propagation with um, Kalanchoe orgialis, looks like that's a definite possibility. Oh yeah, duh, here it is right behind me, a big, um, a big orgialis. Now, you know what, here's a decision. Do I wanna take that out or do I wanna leave it? And I think I wanna leave it. I don't think there's any need of taking that plant out. I like the shape. I know it's leaning forward a little bit, but that doesn't really bother me. What I don't like is this Senecio behind it. So I'm gonna pull that out. Oh, can you say hi to Chris and Carlos from Los Angeles? Chris and Carlos from LA, hi, nice to see you. Biggest, fan. biggest fans, biggest fans, everybody. Mm-hmm. Chris and Carlos from LA. Look at that. So I have been known to throw pieces of Senecio orange puffs, Manianthus, I think it's called, in back here to get some height going. And, you know, as you can see here, I haven't been the most successful. This is scrawny and scrubby and kind of gross looking, but it was making an effort. See, it was put into cutting and it was starting to root. So there's hope for Senecio amaniensis. Also look here where it had been cut, all that new growth from beneath the cuts. So this is a plant that definitely deserves a second chance, but in a different spot. I'm gonna plant this out somewhere where it's gonna get more sun. I think it's gonna be a lot happier and should be a very successful plant in the garden. 
Olivia and Sandra. Oh, Olivia and Sandra are duking it out, huh? Duking it out. Love you guys. You are a hoot. Okay. Do I have any recommendations for succulents that can grow in the UK? Kim Watts wants to know. Kim Watts wants to know. Hi. Hello, United Kingdom. God bless. I have so many followers from the United Kingdom. And you all impress the crap out of me. I have not been to the UK. But I've watched Downton Abbey. Right? Yeah, that's the UK, right? I've watched some shows. I've seen some movies. I admire your accent. We like Mr. Bean and Harry Styles. But one thing that I've noticed is it's all almost raining and cloudy. A lot there. Gorgeous country, but not the most conducive to growing succulents and cactus, is it? Uh, so, First of all, you're probably going to be reduced to, to growing collections, meaning things in pots, which is okay. I have some followers in Virginia. There's a fantastic lady in Ireland. Um, her YouTube is Desert Plants of Avalon, and her name is Lynn. She is fantastic. Desert Plants of Avalon. If you want to check her out on YouTube, she posts a lot. <laughs> Excuse me. She grows magnificent things in Ireland, but they're all in greenhouses and they're all protected. So I think you're not going to grow aeoniums. Um, those are our native of the Canary Islands and would probably commit suicide in the UK. Um, I would think that a lot of the agaves, a lot of the cacti, a lot of the cotyledon, um, maybe some echeveria, a lot of things will tolerate your conditions if they're protected from your weather. So find some really gorgeous pots and plant away. And remember, top dressings are critical. I could spend a lifetime just gardening in a pot. So for those of you that can't put things in the ground, no worries, you can have a stunning collection of potted succulents and have all kinds of fun with top dressings and baby those plants and nurture those plants and learn about those plants and bore people to tears about your newfound knowledge about those plants. You got this. <laughs> All right, I have, oh, what a hot mess. Look at that. Now this is classic rot. I think this may have been an aeonium once, but this is, see that, like a limp wiener. It's squishy too. This is a plant that rotted and it is toast. No redemption for that. Oh, look at this. Here is an Aeonium sunburst that's about to bloom out. See that? What do we know about Aeoniums? They're monocarpic, right? Meaning that after they bloom, they die. Well, this mama, you can see she's about to bloom because at the terminal end, there's a lot of really, really tiny leaves and that's gonna going to open up into a, a kind of a, a cone-like shaped flower and then she's going to deciduate and die. But look at all the babies. Look at all these guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine plantlets. So what's going to happen, I'm going to set this aside and in another video we're going to work with these babies and I'm going to show you how to make the most of these tiny little sunburst plants. Oh, Chrissy Jones, you watched me uh, fall into the pool in um, 
La Mesa. Oh, thank God. Two things. One, it was summer and it was hot. And two, that pool was heated. Yeah, the first thing I said is, where's the client? Because I felt, oh, I don't know, a tad unprofessional. But I misjudged it. I thought that pool was further back than it was. And there was a moment when I thought I might be able to write myself. And I think the most glorious thing about that video was that Hannah never stopped filming. <laughs> that was the best part, because that was classic. And thank God she had my phone, because she was filming. But I did ruin my boots. Um, but everything else was, was fine. I was fine. All was well. And it was pretty freaking funny. Do I have any agave attenuatas in my garden? Yes, I have my attenuata variegata that is my pride and joy over by the fountain. And then I have a giant foxtail agave over underneath the Brugmansia. That foxtail over there by the Brugmansia was a cutting. I needed something big in that corner. And I've got a Synodenium grantii behind it that has never been particularly happy in that spot. Um, that's probably another thing that I will do during quarantine is dig out that Synodenium, try to find a home for it where it's going to be happier, maybe a, a place where it gets more sun. And then I will take that agave and push it back. It's, it's starting to really eat that corner of the garden. I used a lot of these orange puffs. Huh? Oh. Ugh. Oh, the pond. Yeah, this is a really, really shallow pond. It's probably maybe a foot deep. It looks a lot deeper though. And you can see that my lily pads are making a comeback. I've also got some grasses in there. And what that accomplishes is to keep the algae at bay. Um, having some plants in your water uh, keeps the algae from becoming a problem. Uh, it also is important to have the fountain concept or the moving water so that you don't collect mosquitoes. I also put mosquito fish in this pond every year in the summertime just as a precaution. I can't do any other kind of fish though because the we have heron and we have a lot of very rambunctious raccoons and they have decimated this garden more than once when I tried goldfish. So another thing that I need to do, and I'm getting there slowly, but look at what a hot mess it is around the water feature. These plants have completely run amok. I mean, really, really, this is out of control. See these aeoniums that are falling over those probably have developed some rot, so I need to get in there and cut those before the rot spreads and kills the plant. Um, this, this aloe started off as a single cutting and now it's branched down there, it's up here. This one's got three or four heads. I've got a sticks on fire back here a Synodenium grantii. These need to be dug out, cut up and reset because the sticks on fire is going to take over if I don't get after it quickly. It's just challenging to get in there because of the pond. So I've just sort of been turning a blind eye. But this is another thing that I definitely need to address. All of the plants along the bank of the pond are basically sitting on plastic. Greg installed a pond liner, a thick plastic pond liner, you know, obviously before we built it out with the flagstones and the rock, and that pond liner extends about a foot and a half over each side. 
So I just propped these cuttings up along the side and hoped for the best. And I'll be doggone if they didn't figure it out. Oh, Kathy Olson, you don't see any weeds in the garden because yesterday I spent the entire day pulling them. <laughs> um, I have a special methodology that I will happily share with you. It's called seaweed pull a weed. I know you're rolling your eyes because some of you have really large properties and you haven't pulled a weed in a year or two and it's completely overwhelming. Well, start somewhere. Um, in a garden this size, it's completely manageable. I left to go up to Northern California to our property up there for three weeks, came home, and I had some weeds that were as tall as my hip. I had little oxalis. I had a lot of weeds, but I love pulling weeds. Personally, I find it very gratifying, especially after the rain. And frankly, we have not found a cure for weeds. We've tried putting down landscape barrier, weed barrier fabric. They still grow. Um, you can treat them with Roundup, but that's really, really dangerous and ill-advised. We don't use Roundup anymore. So basically, I and my team get on our hands and knees with a multi-tool and we go after those weeds and we pull them from the roots. It is the most gratifying thing you will ever do. And if you're consistent with that in time, weeds really, you really will get ahead of it. During the year, I don't spend much time at all on weeds here because I see one, I pull one. So I've pretty much overcome the situation through years and years of diligence. All of my plants are fjord that get, for example, Bentley's toilet area is in the shade right now. My gutters over in my trash can area and my raised bed are in the shade right now. This main area where I'm working right now is pretty much full sun, but we are Chula Vista semi inland. I mean, we're not coastal, but we're not like El Cajon. So, Temperatures usually stay below 90 degrees in the 70s with, with uh, drops rarely into the 40s, rarely below the 40s at night. So this really is the microclimate from heaven because I don't have to deal with freeze. I t usually don't have much issue with real hot weather and everything just tends to thrive. So I am very, 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 very fortunate. <clears throat> now, here's an issue. This Crassula Argentia sunset is a problem and it is taking up a lot of real estate in that I had originally planted it against the wall and it is listed forward about three feet. So I want to take this plant out and reset it up. Oh. Spawn of Satan. Over you go, buddy. Are there, yet? there are no neighbors behind me, just open space. Look at that. Okay. That's a butte, Clark. Yes, it is. My bush is burning. My bush is always burning when I garden. Oh, my bush is burning right now, too, because I am cutting up this beautiful plant. And I know that what I am doing is going to create color. Because there's nothing more stressful than getting your head cut off. And Crassula Argentia Sunset is really, really susceptible to throwing off color when stressed. So see how green it is right now? Do I have any yellow out here? Yeah, see along the side of the pond, Greg? See along the side of the pond, that yellow Crassula? It's the same plant. 
That one is more stressed though, because remember it's sitting on plastic, not, on, not in soil. This one's just been spoiled with a lot of soil, a bit of shade, and probably more water than it needs. I'm gonna fix that. How often do I water? Is there a better time to water? Well, it's best to water in the early morning, in my opinion. If you water at night, things can stay damp and that can set things up for, for some mildew. Um, early morning is good. Gives the, the, the plants a chance to take the water in before the heat of the day. Um, I really water when I feel like it. That's why I suck it at house plants because house plants don't really like being watered whenever. They seem to like a system or a timely manner of hydration. I have found in my experience, succulents don't really care. I mean, you can't really screw it up if you live in San Diego because we get almost no rain because our soils are very porous and drain well. Temperatures are rarely below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, rarely above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So I can water whenever I want and I love to do it. So typically, yeah, typically I water probably every, as a rule, every two to three days, I'll take the hose. It's another thing I hand water. And I just kind of rinse everything off, kind of like like shower everything off. Um, it's best to let your soil dry out in between waterings. That's a good rule of thumb. Do I do that? M no. Like I said, I just kind of water when I feel like it. I have instincts for this that I don't have for house plants. <laughs> so if you don't have instincts and you need more specific direction, I completely understand that. I respect that you have my sympathy and empathy. You cannot go wrong watering your succulents once a week. Water gently, meaning water with the idea that you're going to dust off all of the leaves and that you're going to get enough water to percolate through that soil to at least get to the roots, which are pretty shallow. Deblin wants to know how do you get rid of the critters? Well, you have to outsmart them and you've got to learn to work with them too. We have uh, issues with gophers, with voles, with raccoons, possums, the occasional rat. And we also have a cat named Thing that is death on all of the above. So when people ask me how to get rid of gophers, I tell them to get a cat. I mean, it literally has worked wonders for us. This cat brings critters to the door almost on the daily. So I rarely see anything bothering my garden. In a client's garden back in the day, before I started working exclusively with succulents, rabbits were eating their lawn, oh, just making a mockery of it. And the client was so distraught and I didn't really know what to do. I mean, I had bought coyote urine online and I'd sprayed that around. I'd had Greg P everywhere. Nothing was working. Nothing was keeping those rabbits away. And I had kind of forgotten about it and given up. Um, and I decided that along the perimeter of their garden, which butted up against some open space, I would plant some blue festuca grasses, which are those little blue poofy grasses, because I thought they would be pretty not knowing that it's crack for rabbits. So it's an inexpensive plant. It's a grass, it's non-invasive, it grows in clumps. I planted a bunch of them. The rabbits came up the hill, ate, n um, just nibbled on the blue festuca, got full and went back to their lives. Never came in and ate the grass after that. So that was an accidental genius move on my part. Outsmart them. <clears throat> oh, good one. Um, some of you have been asking about damage, leaf damage on your plants, and I'm looking for a plant 
in my garden with leaf damage and I don't see one. Oh God, I'm so wonderful, aren't I? <laughs> that sounds so bad. I'm sorry, I don't have any, wait. I, I've gotta have something damaged. Something is to have been nibbled on at some point. Oh, here we go, okay. All right, this Fred Ives will do. Like that. Okay, and see, there's some, see, but I mean, basically the leaf's damaged, isn't it? There's some little, a few little red dots on this sedum. And that's basically it. I don't have a lot of damaged things right now to show you, but damage is damage. Oh, here's some other. So let's talk about that. Look at that. That. I see you. That is classic snail damage there. When holes have been eaten in your plants like that, you've got snails. There may be kids watching, so I'm not going to say what I would normally say, but it starts with an F and it ends with an R. Um, hate those things. This, this looks like it's probably snail too, but right here. Are there insects on this plant right now? No, right? Do you see any bugs? I see nothing. So what in the world, right? Well, there were insects on this plant at some point, maybe uh, three weeks ago, maybe a month ago, maybe a week ago. This got visited by something that nibbled on my plant. Was it mealy? Was it aphid? I don't, uh, scale, I don't know. There's no evidence now. So all that's been left behind is scarring. So. I'm not going to worry about this, but if I were to see a lot of this in a large area, I would treat with a drench, with a systemic drench uh, of pesticide to kill anything that might be lurking around in the ground, tucked away under a leaf or otherwise just hiding out so that it could go back to lunch when I wasn't looking. Yes. Um, when's a good time to move an agave or a cactus? Is it better to move it during dormancy or during its active growth cycle? It depends on where you're moving it to. Um, is it going in the ground? Is it going to be put in a pot? Um, what, can, when, what can we expect in the way of temperatures? of rainfall if it's a really valuable plant i would suggest moving it when it's actively growing how do you know a plant's actively growing it's throwing off something a leaf it's throwing off a bloom with a cactus it's it's getting taller um, when it's active it would be my suggestion as opposed to when it's dormant because when it's dormant, it's more stressed. And if you switch it up and you change its conditions and you add to the stress, it could um, become more susceptible to disease. So generally spring, is good. spring is a great time to work with plants in general. There is a window like right now, even aeoniums, you know, we are not in summer yet. We are out of winter. So everything is either active or semi, maybe just in a semi dormant state. Uh, now is a really good time to manipulate and work with plants. Okay. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so... I have been notified by my crew that I'm running out of juice. My battery's getting low and starting to sprinkle again. So we should probably call this sesh. Um, but I, I am absolutely not done with you. I will reach out on the community page and let you know, give you, give you a, a heads up as to when I'm going to be back out. And we'll pick up where we left off with more fun 
in the garden. You know, expect to see, again, those daily YouTube videos are gonna be coming at you while we're in quarantine. Um, be sure and comment on the community page about what you might like to see in the way of a video and keep your eyes open for more lives. I, I feel so good connecting with so many of you in this way. This has made you, uh, guys have absolutely made my day. And, and if I have inspired you at all to get outdoors, to lose yourself in the beauty of nature and work with your plants, then um, I've done what I set out to do. This has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity, reporting live from my back garden and your succulent tip of the day. Love you guys. See you soon.